Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Paul Richardson, and it's my pleasure to present to you, on behalf of my co-investigators, a brief summary of our oral presentation at the American Society of Hematology um, uh, presented at the uh, meeting in New Orleans um, recently. Um, this was the isotuximab plus pomalidomide low-dose dexamethasone study compared to pomalidomide low-dose dexamethasone in patients with relapsed and refractory myeloma, the so-called ICARIA trial. And in this presentation, we looked at the characterization of subsequent anti-myeloma therapies and their impact um, on, on outcome in the setting of this study. Just to remind people that isotuximab targets a specific epitope of CD38 and is an important addition to the therapeutic armamentarium in myeloma, complementing obviously the important role of daratumumab, recognizing that the two antibodies do have distinct differences. As mentioned, it targets a specific epitope, and in that context, it has particular activity against the ectoenzymic component um, of the CD38 complex. So there's not only ADCC, ADCP, and CDC effects from isotuximab, although be it somewhat less in terms of complement activation compared to daratumumab, the direct apoptosis and immunomodulation caused by the antibody, together with the inhibition of ectoenzymic activity preclinically, um, is distinct to that that which we see um, with daratumumab. Now, in the context of the ACARIA trial, we compared isotuximab, pomalidomide, and dexamethasone um, combined as a triplet to the control of, at that time, pomalidomide and dexamethasone, recognizing this particular combination is really quite active and quite effective as a doublet. Um, our primary endpoint um, was progression-free survival. And of course, we also looked at other secondary endpoints, including toxicities, uh, duration of response, overall survival, and so forth. And the treatment summarizing, summarizing this treatment schema for each arm is shown here. This is the one for isotuximab, pomalidomide, and dex. And this is the schema for um, the um, pomalidomide and dex at the bottom. But what I want to share with you is that when we give isotuximab, with pomalidomide and dexamethasone, the first cycle is intensive with weekly isotuximab. And then in the subsequent cycles, we do it every two weeks. Um, so very convenient and outpatient-based um, regimen. Now, by way of background, the ACARIA trial was the approval finding study for the combination of isotuximab, pomalidomide, and dexamethasone. We also followed as a key secondary endpoint overall survival. And the final overall survival analysis revealed a clinically meaningful benefit in favor of the triplet versus the doublet um, with follow-up at 52.4 months. And what you can see here is that we saw um, overall survival in 69% uh, of the patients um, with uh, the, I apologize, we saw overall survival with the median overall survival with the triplet of 25 months um, versus um, uh, that of 18 months um, for the doublet. So in this context, this was overall survival events that occurred in 69% of those on the triplet and 75% of those on the doublet. So hence the obvious difference that emerged in overall survival between the triplet compared to the doublet. And this generated a hazard ratio of 0.766, uh, or I apologize, 0.776, with a log rank p-value of 0.03, which was statistically um, significant. Um, now, importantly, one factor that may have impacted upon bringing this difference or the hazard ratio um, down uh, or up rather uh, in terms of overall survival analysis was a so-called technique called RPSFT. This stands for Rank Preserving Structural Failure Time. And this uses to, is used to estimate if you use daratumumab appropriately as you should in this study, should the control patients who are receiving POMDEX progress how did this impact in turn on survival? Now, why this may matter is because this may help us understand optimal sequencing of CD38 therapy um, in this setting. So with that as background, the objectives of this particular analysis were to better understand the impact of the sequencing of antimyeloma therapy and basically look at longer term data including efficacy following subsequent therapy in the phase three trial setting, of which there is relatively limited data in this, in this particular relapsed refractory population to date. And this trial represents one in which we deliberately sought to try and better understand this and to provide long-term follow-up information to inform uh, providers. These are basically a summary of the patient disposition and exposure to study treatments. Um, as you can see, 
basically in terms of the dose intensity of treatment, isotuximab was preserved at a very high level. Um, in terms of pomalidomide, <clears throat> this was also reasonably preserved at around 81%. And then what you can see here is that dexamethasone was also relatively preserved at 84%. Dose reductions were dominated in the pomalidomide um, uh, uh, category uh, and dexamethasone compared to um, the uh, isotuximab in which the dose reductions obviously were much more limited. In contrast with pomalidomide, obviously we saw less dose reductions there because of the activity um, of the doublet in that regard. So going forward from this, um, the uh, time to next therapy analysis is summarized here. And what you can see here is that the hazard ratio was particularly positive uh, in favor of the doublet, uh, sorry, in favor of the triplet compared to the doublet. You can see here that patients who received the triplet, their median time to next therapy was 15.5 months compared to just nine months for the doublet. So basically, time to next treatment analysis showed a significant delay for the triplet over the doublet. And in that context, the summary of antimyeloma therapies is summarized here. In the interest of time, I'll just focus on saying that more patients on the doublet receive subsequent therapy, as you might expect because simply more patients were staying on the triplet for longer. But importantly, for those patients who received pomalidomide-based therapy and did not receive isotuximab, they appropriately received subsequent daratumumab. What is interesting is if you look here, that those patients who received the triplet and required therapy at relapse, this was interestingly dominated by chemotherapy to a greater extent than that those patients receiving the doublet. Now, if you look at response rate by subsequent non bad daratumumab based myeloma therapies in the intent to treat population, you can see here that non imid based regimens versus imid based regimens appear to have a better response rate after the triplet, which is very interesting. And then if you look here, as expected, the overall response rate was higher with subsequent daratumumab therapy after the doublet versus the triplet. But what's really interesting too, though, is that you could salvage patients with high VGPR rates, similar for both arms, using a CD38, but it had to be in combination. So daratumumab combinations led to improved responses versus monotherapy, and this principle applied to both arms. If you then looked at basically receiving daratumumab as first subsequent line of therapy, it's very important to note that the VGPR rates were higher um, even after the triplet with a shorter washout period, which was an interesting observation, perhaps somewhat unexpected. With that in mind, if we look at progression-free survival on first line of subsequent therapy in PFSS2, we made the following observation, that despite the use of subsequent DARA in the uh, doublet arm and its potential benefit in PFS in the first subsequent therapy, you might expect maybe this is an equalizer, we actually showed that the PFS2 by intent to treat was significantly longer for the triplet. And this was quite remarkable at 17.5 months versus 12.88. Why is this important? And the p-value here is 0 0.0091 with a hazard ratio of 0.735 because it tells you that keeping your CD38 in reserve does not make sense in this setting. So in summary, what we were able to show with this complicated, but I think informative analysis was that progression-free survival in the second setting, PFS2 as it's called, and time to next therapy showed continuous benefit for the triplet versus the doublet without inducing more resistant disease refractory to subsequent therapies. And I think this is a very important principle because it shows that bringing your best combinations earlier in the disease course for a patient makes very good sense based on these data. I think what's appropriate to note is that if you received a doublet, um, the appropriate uh, next step would be a daratumumab-based approach, which makes complete sense. Um, having said that, what was so interesting was that the immediate use of daratumumab appeared to be less effective immediately after therapy with prior anti-CD38 therapy, which is, which is fair. That makes sense to sort of introduce BCMA-based strategies, for example. However, what was so important to note was that the response rates were generally similar between the treatment arms, and above all, daratumumab combinations were better than monotherapy in both arms. And I think critically, no cross-resistance was observed. Now, there are limitations to this analysis. We have to recognize the small sample size, and obviously it's open label. It's not placebo controlled appropriately. Um, nonetheless, I think the conclusions we can come to these results provide initial information on potential efficacy differences related to treatment sequencing. And obviously, in future studies, this sets an important bar, I think, or principle that we should pursue.
And in terms of future directions, they're summarized here. Obviously, we have the really exciting results of isotuximab combined with carfilzomib in the Kema trial. And taken together, I think these both show the emerging and promising role of isotuximab in the relapsed refractory setting. And bringing this agent sooner or earlier into disease courses is an area of very active study, both um, in less heavily pretreated patients and at the same time in the newly diagnosed setting. And so we believe isotuximab combinations will continue to contribute to improve patient outcomes in myeloma. And with that, I just want to especially acknowledge um, our patients and families who participated and all our investigators and study centers um, who were part of the trial from 24 participating studies, uh, centers, countries, I beg your pardon. Thank you very, very much.